Imagine you have a bunch of data stored in one database. Let's call it the old house. But now you want to move all that data to a new and fancier database, which we'll call the new house. In this case, the new house is AWS. Well, AWS DMS is like your moving service. It helps you pack up all your stuff from the old house and safely transport it to the new house without breaking anything. First, AWS DMS supports a bunch of different types of databases like Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, and many more. It's like having a moving service that knows how to handle all kinds of furniture and belongings. Once you have chosen AWS DMS as your moving service, it takes care of converting the furniture and belongings from the old house to fit nicely into the new house. So if the old house had big closets, but the new house has smaller ones, AWS DMS will adjust everything so it fits properly. That's called schema conversion. Now comes the interesting part. While you're moving, AWS DMS also makes sure that any new changes happening in the old house, like the new data being added, are synchronized and replicated to the new house. It's like having someone to keep an eye on both houses and making sure everything stays up to date. During the actual move, AWS DMS tries to minimize any disruption or downtime. It's like moving your stuff while you're still living in the old house. It keeps things running smoothly so you can continue using your data while the move is happening. Of course, there might be a short period of time when you have to pause and settle down in the new house, but it's a small inconvenience for a bigger gain. Through the whole process, AWS DMS provides you with updates on how the move is going. It's like getting real-time messages about the progress of your work. So you know everything is going smoothly. In addition to moving service, AWS DMS also comes with extra tools that help you with the migration, like checking if all your furniture is intact and handling any unexpected situations that might arise during the move. All in all, to say that AWS DMS is like a reliable moving service that helps you migrate your data from an old database to a new database in AWS. It takes care of all the heavy lifting, ensures the data stays up to the date and keeps you informed along the way. It's like moving your belongings to a better and more modern house without the hassle and the stress. Hello everyone and welcome to this video by IntelliPath. In this video, we will be explaining all about AWS DMS and migration. Now let us take a look at the agenda. So we're going to start with what is cloud migration and then we are going to cover why migration is important. Moving further, we'll cover migration process in AWS, six R's in migration strategy, VM migration, etc. After that, we'll cover one demo for local VM migration, database migration, and another demo for local database. Before we begin, please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for the regular updates from us. So before hopping on to how we do migration in AWS and what is migration in AWS, let's understand first what is cloud migration. So going with cloud migration, Cloud migration is the term for moving data, application, or any local element like a virtual machine to the cloud computing environment. So basically, if I am moving a virtual machine or a database or any application from anywhere to my cloud environment, then it is known as cloud migration. Now, I said from anywhere. Now, what does that mean? that I can transfer it from one cloud environment to another. I can even transfer it from on-premise to cloud. Both will be ex explained as migration. Now, there are basically two types of migration, which is hot migration and cold migration. Now, what is hot migration and what is cold migration? If the virtual machine I'm using for migrating purpose, if I have turned off that virtual machine then it will be a cold migration but let's say my virtual machine is on and i am trying to do the migration in that case then it will be termed as hot migration going with which will be more beneficial to us so we will be going with cold migration now why is that so because when hot migration is in process then since my virtual machine is on i may process some data into it and there might be conditions where I may lose the data. But going with cold migration, since my virtual machine is off, I will not be processing data. So I will never lose that data. So we will be always going with cold migration. But yeah, in certain scenarios, people do go with hot migration as well. Now, we know that migration is 
like migrating our machine from on premise or cloud to other cloud or from on premise to cloud so why should we opt for migration let's discuss first why going with migration from on premise to cloud in that case let's understand why migration is important so if you want to expand your business in that case migration is important let's say business there is a business owner who is thinking of expanding his business then in that case he or she will definitely choose migrating because it is like he if you are in a certain region then you will be limited to that region until and unless you migrate your resources to other region and you want to serve your customers best else they might face latency issues now going with the same example like if a business owner is thinking to expand his business the business owner found a solution to move his application to the cloud for reducing cost and global reach which we explained in first point that if you are not migrating over cloud then you will have to establish your servers in different countries for troubleshooting latency issues which will cost you more so you if you migrate to cloud you will have a reduction in cost and a global reach now this is the conclusion of that part the story which is going on that the business owner wanted to expand his business then he went for cloud he migrated all his applications to cloud and now his customers have increased now like uh, increase in profit and the customers are happy with the service he is providing or she is providing so with this story what we can consider that uh, these are the basic points for which you should migrate to cloud so the first point if i have to go is scale according to the application traffic which means that you can upscale or downscale as per your requirement like if going with the previous example if let's say instead of expanding his business he is facing issues with like uh, i am not getting enough traffic so i should cut down some servers i should remove some servers so he will have to remove them manually the other thing is until and unless he knows that i am not getting enough traffic he will be charged for that servers as well but if he is or she is on cloud then in that case the servers he can manage them to be removed automatically on the basis of traffic coming and the person will never be charged for the servers which they are not using now the next point is reduce operational cost so if you are upscaling and downscaling as per your requirements you will be never charged for the resources which you are not using and you will be only charged for resources for the time you are using them so most of the cloud follows pay per use strategies or on demand strategies so these strategies are quite helpful in saving cost the next point is faster application implementation which means that you don't have to like go with hectic part of implementing your application you just have to upload your code on cloud let's say any compute engine or any application service the application will be implemented by the service itself you don't have to be hectic like building an entire environment and then set up setting up that environment in cloud you can just do those things with few clicks you don't have to worry about that businesses can have global reach if going with the previous example itself we understood that he will have to establish servers so if going with cloud the servers are already present you have to just get those servers and you will be paying for those servers only you can easily migrate your data or replicate your data into those servers in order to use those servers and you will be having a global reach even going with databases you can have your databases across different regions globally so that people in that particular region can access the nearest database or nearest server so you won't be facing any issue with that as well the next thing is better disaster recovery strategies 
Now, let's say you lost your that data. In that case, you will always refer to the backup. In cloud, those things are even better. If there is a disaster and your application is going down, the all the cloud services have this feature of automated backups. They will refer to the backup which was latest and your application will not go down. It will be up and running. Next thing is better application and data security. So going with your local servers or on-premise setup, you have to pay for security charges. It's like uh, you will have to opt for a guard. You will have to manage your firewall, everything. In cloud, we can even do those things within few clicks. And the security will be taken care by the cloud service provider itself, which means if I'm going with AWS, AWS will take care of my security. If I am going with GCP, GCP will take care of my security. If I'm going with Azure, if I'm going with Oracle Cloud, and there are several other cloud like Salesforce Cloud, they will be taking care of the security if I'm using that cloud. Here, if I go with AWS, AWS will take care of the security. Now, the other thing is firewalls. I have to, don't have to go with hacking coding of managing firewalls. I can manage my firewalls within few clicks, just adding the rules. This are few benefits of going with cloud. If I have to summarize them, so the summary will be to increase my business reach, to decrease the cost, to scale as per my requirement, to implement and deploy application and its versions very easily, which means that if I have to go for newer version, I can directly upload newer version. If I have to roll back to older version, I can easily roll back to older version of my application. The next thing is to get better disaster recovery as already explained that we get better disaster recovery in cloud. The things are automated and to get better and easy security, which means that I can easily manage my security. So this is all about cloud migration and why is it important and going with cloud to cloud migration. Why is it done to let's say if you are working on a cloud and the other cloud is offering better charges, you will go definitely migrate from one cloud to another. The other thing is, let's say your particular cloud is not having that much expanded network and the other cloud to which you want to migrate, it is providing you a better network. In that case, you will be going to that cloud. So basically migrating from one cloud to another cloud is dependent upon factors like cost and network reach. But security, going with security, the security is always managed by your cloud provider and you can even compare the security that who is offering me better security and you can even switch on the security reasons. So these are few facts, factors about cloud migration and why it is important, why we should opt for cloud migration. We will be understanding how migration works in AWS, like what is the process of migration in AWS. So let's hop on to it. So these are the four basic steps which you will require when you are going with migration process in AWS or let's say the process may differ slightly in other clouds, but it will remain constant for every platform where you want to migrate. But yeah, few steps will remain same and few will change, few might change. So the first step is migration preparation and business planning. The second step is portfolio discovery and planning. And third step is basically combination of two steps, which is migration and validation and application design. And finally, we reach to the operative step where we have to operate and manage. So if I have to discuss each of these things, what is migration preparation and business planning? So going with this before shifting our entire infrastructure or our application on cloud, we have to discuss and come to the conclusion that what services we have to move in order to make this migration useful to us. Else there might be applications which are not compatible with the cloud. There might be strategies which may not be in the favor of your business. So you have to discuss all of these things before migrating and you have to draw a business plan for that. 
now what this business plan will contain this will contain like what to move and services to run which will be beneficial for our business like i will be deciding if there are three different servers or three applications running so which application will be more useful to me more productive to me in if i am moving it to cloud and which will wh whose efficiency will decrease if i move it to cloud so i have to discuss that with my team and my this first step will contain all the details that i have to move these resources to clouds and this will be the benefit of these resources if they are moved to the cloud and i have to leave these resources on premise only or on this particular cloud only the next step is portfolio discovery and planning so once you have gone with the previous step of deciding this this service i have to move and this services i don't have to move it will be in benefit of my business and it will help me out and it will help my organization to grow in this step what you will do you will test the readiness now what is this testing the readiness so let's say you decided that out of these three resources i have to move these two resources only so in this step you will discuss the strategy of the movement that i have to use this strategy in order to move my machines to cloud or my resources to clouds and you will discuss that if these resources are compatible or not if not compatible what changes i have to make before moving them to cloud and i will be testing them as well that if i am moving how they are behaving so these all things i will cover in this step basically in the first step i will decide that these are the resources i have to move and in this step i will test their readiness if they are ready to be moved to cloud or not now the next step is migration and validation and application design so here basically we decide like uh, if we are going with a particular strategy will this work because we decided that strategy in the previous step that i will go with this strategy now if i have decided a strategy i will have to check if it is working or not so in this step i will be migrating using that strategy i will be validating if it is working totally fine or not and i will be making changes according to that so if i have to summarize this point basically we migrate to cloud and we check if the functionality is proper and validate the environment if not we design it again and we again my migrate it and check the requirements that if it is meeting my requirements or not so if i have to make it shorter we will migrate and check if it is working properly if not we will again design the structure and again we will validate if it is working or not now the next step is operate now what is this step once we are done with all the previous steps our machine is now on cloud so in operate step we have to just monitor that if everything is going fine if there is any issue i will be going with previous steps again if not everything will be working fine i have to monitor the security i have to monitor their utilization and everything in this step basically this is the step which i have to do lifelong that once they are migrated i will be obviously monitoring them and i will be maintaining things regularly in order to make my application useful i don't want my application or resources to go down so this is one of the steps like the operate is the step where which we have to go through entire our life like once we are migrated we will be inside this step itself operate so that our application doesn't goes down or the resources don't go down so if i have to summarize all these points in first step we will be design deciding that what are the things to migrate will that be beneficial for my business or or organization or not in second step i will decide that what strategy should i use if i have decided that these resources are to be migrated are they compatible or not and then in the next step i will migrate my resources i will check how they are functioning i will implement the changes 
विच आई थिंक दैट इफ आई मेक दिस चेंजेस माई एप्लीकेशन विल बी मोर यूजफुल एंड आई विल वैलिडेट दो चेंजेस इफ इट इज़ नॉट कंपेटेबल आई विल अगेन चेंज द डिज़ाइन ऑफ माई एप्लीकेशन एंड आई विल अगेन वैलिडेट इट वंस इट इज़ वैलिडेटेड द नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज ऑपरेट माई मशीन इज माइग्रेटेड नाउ एंड आई हैव टू जस्ट मेनटेन इट्स सेफ्टी सिक्योरिटी आई हैव टू मोनिटर इट आई हैव टू मेनटेन इट्स वर्जनस एंड एवरी थिंग इन द ऑपरेट इट सेल्फ वॉट आर द थिंग्स वी हैव टू गो विथ वाई माइग्रेटिंग अ मशीन सो दे आर वी अंडरस्टूड दैट वाई क्रिएटिंग आवर पोर्टफोलियो वी हैव टू चूज अ स्ट्रैटेजी एंड इवन इन आवर एप्लीकेशन इम्प्लीमेंटेशन डिजाइन एंड वैलिडेशन स्टेप आई हैव टू फॉलो वन ऑफ दीज स्ट्रैटेजीज सो लेट सी वॉट आर दोज स्ट्रैटेजीज सो गोइंग विथ आवर क्लाउड वी हैव सिक्स आर्स माइग्रेशन स्ट्रैटेजी विच मीन्स दैट देर आर सिक्स आर्स विच वी हैव टू फॉलो वाइल गोइंग विथ माइग्रेशन एनी स्ट्रैटेजी आई कैन गो अप विथ सो दीज स्ट्रैटेजीज आर री होस्ट री प्लेटफॉर्म री परचेज री फैक्टर री आर और री आर्किटेक्ट यू कैन सी देन रिटायर एंड रिटेन सो ना वॉट दीज सिक्स आर्स आर इफ आई हैव टू डिस्कस ईच ऑफ दैम लेट्स हॉप ऑन टू देयर डिस्क्रिप्शन सो using this diagram you can see what these r's are so basically if i have to explain rehost what it will do here we have to push our virtual machine on cloud while changing the settings such as the port number security configuration we can like if i created a virtual machine on premise i can just push it over the cloud using its image now after that what i can do i can like either automate or i can manually rehost my application on cloud here you can see that there are two ways automatic and manual if i go with manual i will have to install it configure it and deploy it manually if i go with automate it will use the migration tool available with aws itself and do the task for me so basically what i am doing i am creating a image of my machine and uploading it on cloud and once it is upload i can either automate its deployment process or i can do that process manually and the cloud service provider will take care of it further now the next strategy is replatform now let's say previous strategy was used while i was migrating a virtual machine so replatform is best strategy when we have to migrate a database or a saas let's say a crm so how does it work let's say we will push the content of our rds and then we will determine what kind of platform it should go with so after that we can once we choose the platform it will go with we can configure its security details and we can say if we want to create new tables if we want to create new database we can manage all those things and using the migration tool rest of the things will be taken care by our cloud provider so basically when it is used it is used to save our time if we are going with a database migration or crm migration basically what i can do i can push my rds and then my i can define which database engine i have to use like if i want to use my sql i can decide my sql if i want to go with amazon aurora i can decide amazon aurora and then i can modify my infrastructure to which machine i want to use what will be the specifications what will be its security group rules and then rest of the things will be taken care by my cloud provider the next thing is repurchase let's say you are using a crm in previous we understood that we can use it for database migration as well as crm but going with database it will be quite easier but if you are going with crm it may be quite hectic to set up everything so going with crm or any saas the best way is repurchase here what we do we purchase the resources over the cloud itself and we set up the things according to our organization and rest of the things will be taken care 
in my cloud provider itself so basically what i am doing i am repurchasing the tools which i am using on my on premise and those tools will act like compatibly with my cloud i can purchase either an alternative or i can purchase the same crm over the cloud and i can just set up it according to my needs and i will be up and ready to use it the next thing is refactor now in this refactor what i do like previously i in the rehost i launched my vm or application and then i just set up using the image i set up the configuration but in refactor i what i do i redesign my entire infrastructure over the cloud itself so basically what i do i don't migrate my cloud data i redesign everything and i have the new details over my cloud so basically in i will redesign my infrastructure i will again push the code over it i will again set up the directories used and i will check if it is ready to be integrated if it is compatible or not and then it will be up and ready to use i can connect it with my on premise and we i can use both my on premise as well as cloud simultaneously some of my data will be on premise and some of my data will be on cloud using this refactor what i can do once i have designed in this refactor strategy i can i have designed my infrastructure on cloud i can connect my on premise and cloud infrastructure using vpn or transit gateways and then i can use them simultaneously both the data will be accessible from both the ends now the next thing is retain and retire so basically retain and retire these strategies are not much like used now why because in retain we only retain the applications which we think that uh, are not good for migration purpose like let's so let's say there are three resources and you will only migrate the resources which you think that it is compatible with cloud others you will retain on premise so what basically you are doing like in our first step we decided that these resources i have to move these resources i don't have to move in second step i decided that if they are compatible or not so if they are compatible i am moving them if they are not compatible i am retaining them so this is my retain strategy and now the retire strategy the applications which are useless to me i am basically retiring them so basically what i am doing here that uh, in first step i decided that uh, these applications even if i migrate them on cloud it will be of no benefit to me and they are not even benefit to me on premise as well so i will retire them i will just roll them out of service the uh, the other thing is what i can do while checking the compatibility i saw i am planning to move my entire infrastructure on cloud and i saw that these applications are not compatible even after making several changes so i will retire them and i will make entirely new application or i can only use the applications which are compatible so these are the six r migration strategies used for my cloud migration how we can migrate a virtual machine on our cloud from our on premise so let's check it out so going with the steps if i have to check the steps this is the basic step which i have to do so what we are doing migrating our local virtual machine to amazon ec2 basically we are deploying our virtual machine which was on premise to our aws cloud now how that thing is happening if i have to explain this diagram in this diagram i had a virtual machine sorry not virtual machine let's say even if i had a virtual machine or on premise machine i got a image of that machine and then what i did like let's say in my pc i installed virtual box and then i had a machine running in that i created a image of that machine once i created the image i uh, imported it to my aws after importing it to my aws i launched multiple ec2 instances it's that easy 
in AWS. Now, how we can do this entire task? So for that, we have these five steps. The first step is downloading and installing AWS CLI. So if you are migrating over to AWS, you will need to have a AWS account and inside that you can manage your resources using AWS CLI in your local machine. But let's say you don't want to go with downloading AWS CLI. In that case, you can just launch a Amazon Linux EC2 instance and AWS CLI comes pre-installed in it and you can use it for migrating your resources very easily. Now, what is the next step? Export your local VM as a VMDK file and upload it to a S3. Let's say I made a v virtual machine in virtual box. So I will export that virtual machine as a VMDK file and then I will upload it to S3 bucket. And once I have uploaded it to my S3 bucket, I will move to the next step. Import the VM using command. So that's the reason I downloaded AWS CLI or even I launched a Amazon Linux EC2 instance to use, AWS, to use AWS CLI. So what is the use to import the VM using commands? Because we can import our virtual machine using the using some set of commands. So those commands I will be getting from like I will be getting from AWS itself. I can search the documentation for those commands or after searching the documentation, I can directly input those commands. So there are not a large set of commands. There are only two to three commands which we need in order to import our virtual machines, which is quite easy because running only one and two commands is very easy than like going with a set of steps on the console. So AWS quite made it easy for us to import that we can only run one command to import and one command to check the status of my import. Now, after that, we can monitor our task until we see an AMI. So as I told in previous step that there are only two commands, one to import and one to check what is the status. So in this step, we can use the second command in order to monitor until and unless I see an AMI, I can monitor it and I can check once the AMI is deployed, then also I can run the same commands and it will show me that the status is successful. Now using the AMI, which I got on my AWS. Now I can launch virtual machine and it will contain the same data as it was on my virtual machine, which was present on my local system. So this is how I can migrate using these few steps. So if I have to like, see how is it working in this diagram. So first in my local virtual machine, let's say in my local machine, I created a virtual machine using virtual box. And in my local machine, I downloaded AWS CLI. Then I exported the image as VMDK format. And then once it is exported, I used AWS CLI. Like once it is exported, I uploaded my image, the VMDK on S3. And I can do that using CLI as well as I can do that using the console. So once that part is done, I can just run a single command to import my AMI to AWS. And once it is imported, I can use that AMI to launch one instance or multiple instance. And all of them will contain the same data as my local virtual machine. So that's all for virtual machine migration theory part. We will go with the hands on further virtual machine migration hands-on. So for that, we will be creating a local virtual machine and then we will be migrating it to our AWS. So let's create a virtual machine. So I will be using a Ubuntu virtual machine, but if you want, you can use any virtual machine. So let's give it the location where I want my data to be stored and the RAM where I want the partitioning to be happening. And I will be giving it at least four GB of RAM so that it can work totally fine. Now, the next thing is creating a virtual hard disk. I will be creating it right now. I'm going with VMDK format, which is best suitable for virtual machine migration, but you can go with any of these formats. So now next, and I will choose dynamically allocated because I don't want my entire disk to be allocated at a time. I just want that whatever size I need, it should be allocated at the desired moment. Now here it is asking for 10 GB, but I will give it 20 GB 
to be safe now let's go to create and it has been created now the next thing is we have to upload a bootable disk so i will go to storage empty here it is so i will upload my disk over here so i have downloaded the disk which is this one 22.04 i will be using this one you can go with any but i would suggest you to always go with the latest version because latest version are always compatible so let's start and as soon as i click on start my local machine will take some time and then it will start installing my ubuntu so here click just enter on enter and it will start installing so it has taken captured my mouse pointer and it has even captured my keyboard so now we are up and ready to go with this ubuntu it will take quite some time so no need to worry about it because the installation process is very easy but it is quite long so no need to worry about it it may take some time and these are the logs if you will press f9 the logs will be visible but i don't want to go with the logs so i will not press anything we will go with the ui itself so now i waited for quite some time and this installation portal is available to me so here we have to just select for the language in which we want our installation to be and then just click on install ubuntu if you want to just try ubuntu you can go with this option but since we are going with migration so we need to install ubuntu so click on install ubuntu now here we have to select the layout of our keyboard we can even go with detect keyboard layout but i know that my layout is this so i will go with this one continue and most of the keyboard layouts are this only so no need to worry and now i will go with minimal installation because i don't want much of things i just have to go with migration part but if you will go with the real life scenario you will be getting all the things set up prior you just have to follow the second end of this video and click on continue and it will install all the required dependencies for us so let's wait for it to go to the next step where we will be creating a user and choosing a time zone and we will be selecting other resources which we have to install like the next step will be partitioning so let's wait for it so now we are on the next step we just have to click on install now and continue and here we have to select our time zone like i will just select my time zone and continue and this is the most crucial step here i have to give the name and it will pick a username for our system which we will be using it to log into our system even after migrating it and we have to give a password the password which we give here like i have given admin12345 the same password will be used by me to log in and continue now it will begin with installation process so let's wait for it to be installed like it is showing copying files so let's wait for it to be installed and then we will move on to the next step so it took almost 10 to 20 minutes and the installation is complete now we have to just restart our system so click on restart now and it will restart the system for us and it might take some time but it will not take as much time as installation it will take hardly three to five minutes so let's wait for this installation process to be over like the restart the final process in installation is restart so let's wait for it to be over so now in this step like once it has restarted we have to just press enter and it will remove the disk which we have attached because if we keep it attached it will again and again keep installing the ubuntu so it will remove it for us and it will restart the entire session so now let's wait for it to be restarted so now it rebooted and we have to just log into our server so which we created the user so the username is my server and the password is admin12345 so let's give this password and hit enter and it will redirect us into our machine so let's wait for it to redirect us when you will log in for the first time you might feel that it is working quite slow but yeah for the next time it will work very fast because we have already given it 4 gb of ram and we have installed very less dependencies so let's just quit this and hop onto terminal to make the required changes in order to 
see those over the migration part so go to show applications and our terminal will be visible over here so our terminal is open let's do ls and see what are the files available over here so you can see that these are the files available so let's create some files and we will assume that the client who gave us for the migration purpose who caught is having these files available so let's give them some name so these are some sample files we will be seeing them as well as we will okay we don't want software update right now but yeah we are good to go ahead with this so now the next thing is we will be creating a file which we will be opening and reading the data from so sudo nano my test dot txt and admin one two three four five and we are inside it so this is my created machine so let's just write like this congrats this is my created machine so this will be the data we will be seeing over there so we are done till here so now let's assume client gave us this so now the first thing is updated so it will take some time to update because it will have to make the changes required and all so let's wait for it to be updated and once it is updated we will move with the further steps so it got updated and I ran the command again to check if there are nothing no updates left so now the next thing is we have got this from our let's say client so now the thing is we have to allow SSH so that we can go inside this machine and do changes so sudo apt install open ssh server basically this server will allow us to open ssh so let's see so it is currently installing the dependencies so no need to worry about it so it takes quite some time now it is installed so let's check the status of it so sudo system ctl status of ssh and you can see currently this is running by default so what to do now let's allow it allow ssh so sudo and updated and even we need to allow 22 so now it is done so let's exit from here and let's check if the files which we created are available so go to home and yeah they are available so now let's just power off this machine and let's export it so for exporting once the machine is powered off select it go to files export appliances and here you can see it is already selected if you never selected it you can still select it after coming here now the next thing is click on next and don't go with OVA format we will have to go with OVA format so let's put it into our desired document like I want to put it over here the same place from where I got it so but I don't have to go with OVA I have to go with OVF so I will just select OVF and save now next and export so okay I want to replace if there is any existing file so now it is showing very less time but it will take more time than it is showing so no need to worry about it let's wait for it in the meantime it is being exported let's set up the other things which we will require let's discuss those things so we will require im user our s3 bucket and our image will be displayed in this ami so let's create that im role first not im user we will require im role so go to roles create role and now we will be selecting the role which we require so here don't go with aws service go with custom trust policy and right over here in principle the first thing which we have to do is we have to write service because we are giving this role to a particular service now what service we are giving role to it is virtual machine import export and this service is offered to us by amazon aws so just we have to write this and we are good to go with the next step which is we have to attach policy so go to next and 
as I told you apart from IM we will be using S3 and EC2 so I will give it S3 full access which is over here and EC2 full access which is over here so search for EC2 and you can see it is present on top itself so select it and we have selected two policies let's go to the next step and let's give it a name my import export role so I have given it the name and the service is also correct and let's see the permissions EC2 full access and S3 full access these are correct so click on create role and our role will be created now in the meantime the role is created it is created so now the next step is creating a S3 bucket so let's create a S3 bucket now why this S3 bucket will be used we will upload our data on this the exported image on this S3 bucket and then we will create convert into AMI so let's give it a name my import export so that's all and we have to just give a name and click on create bucket if the name is available it will be created if the name is not available it will not be created so the name is available and it has been created so let's go inside it so we are inside our bucket now here is one more thing which we will require which is a container basically it will be a json file which will contain the data of our bucket and the format and the name of the file so this will be the name of the exported file most probably but if it will not be the name i will up change it and this is the name of our bucket now we will be performing all these tasks through our cli so going for that you can see i have command prompt and from where you can download this cli so just go to browser and write aws cli install and you will be able to go to the aws documentation where you will be able to find the different variants like you have to go for windows so you can go and click on this link it will help you out to install once you are installed the cli you will have to configure it so for that go over here aws configure just write this and you will see that it will ask you for aws access key id secret access key a default region name if you want you can give by default and if you don't want this field is not mandatory and even this field is not mandatory but the first two fields are mandatory now where to get this access id and secret access id for that in our aws console go to security credentials and inside security credentials you can see here access key so you just have to click on create access key and your key will be created and if i will recommend you not to lose the access key and along with access key id you will get it one time like access key id will always be visible to you but the secret access key will be available only once so don't lose that keep it with you and you can use it now we have to jump back to our s3 and our bucket so now we are inside our bucket again and once our Im image will be exported it will be available inside my amis so let's see what is the export status so nine minutes remaining no worries we will wait so now the export is successful like if i have to show you we might we exported it to our new volume e and ubuntu so let's check over here so this is the file and the name is ubuntu hyphen disk 001 which is what we have written here dot vmdk format will be vmdk and our bucket name is my imex so let's upload it over our bucket so let's close this first because we don't need it any longer so go to upload so i am uploading it into my emex bucket add files and this is the file which we have to upload and it is prox 5.3 gb no need to worry about it so upload so since it is a huge file it will take quite some time to upload so let's wait for it so now i waited for few more minutes like almost an hour and this file is uploaded now 
so as it is showing 100% so it is uploaded so now let's go to command prompt and import it as we have already made our role we have even uploaded the file so now the next and the only thing remaining is writing the command to import it so as we have already learned about how to configure now the next thing is we have to just write this command aws ec2 import hyphen image and then you have to write that you want to import it from disk containers so basically this disk container will contain this disk container will contain the data of where to fetch the file from and everything so i have to just write the location so since this is a file i will be writing file over here and if i have to show the location the location is inside e migration and the name is container.json so i will have to write everything over here which is e then the file the name of the folder inside which it is migration then container.json so now after this we have to just write the name of the role which we are going to use now why is that important because if we don't use that role it will not be able to access either s3 or ec2 so let's see what was the name of our role so my imp exp role so let's copy it and let's paste the name over here and enter now it will if the code is correct it will start exporting and it will give us a import task id so as you can see here i have a import task id now present with me so what i have to do next is i have to just copy this import task id in order to see the status so just write aws easy to describe image image import image tasks and after that we have to write in import task id which will be basically the id which we copied right now so just write import task and ids so once we have written this just paste the id and hit enter and now it is showing us the current status which is in progress 19 percent and converting so till here we are done now we just have to wait for it to be imported and then it will be available over here inside ami like currently you can see it is not available but once it is successfully done it will be available so let's wait for it and this process might take approx 10 to 20 minutes so now the status has changed to updating and you can see previously it was at 19 progress now it is at 27 so it will take few more time so let's wait up till the next update for each update we will have to run the command like right now if i run the command it will still show me that it is at 27 but after few minutes when it will increase it will let us know and we will have to run the same command in order to know the progress so now after few more minutes it has moved to one more step which is booting so this is like uh, previously we were at 19 then 27 now we are at 39 percent so this is what the progress is showing so let's wait until the next basically till now it has been more than 10 minutes and it will take few more minutes in order to activate it basically it is converting so it will take some so now the status is 51 percent which is preparing ami basically now our ami is being prepared once the ami is prepared it will be visible over here and even a snapshot for the same will be visible in the snapshots so okay, it is taking quite some time to load no worries so now let's hop back to ami and let's wait for it to create and you can see it is still on 51 percent and is preparing ami so let's wait for it so now you can see that it is showing completed so basically it is just after creating ami so it takes very less time in creating ami almost one to two minutes and once ami is created you can see that it has given us a ami id which is this dcde93 
So let's hop onto our console, refresh and check if it is available. So you can see that CDE 9.3 is available. So now the next step is we will be launching an instance from this AMI. So go to instances, launch instance and I'm pretty sure you guys know how to create an instance. So I will just speed run this process. So give it any name. Basically I'm giving my web server. You can give any name. And here in AMI select my AMI and select the AMI which is by a CVDE 9.3. Now after that select a key pair and security group I will go with default and you can see it has by default given 20 GB. So let's launch it. Now it has been launched so let's check the security group configurations if they are okay or not so yeah they are all okay so let's try connecting with it so for connecting if i go to direct instance connect and here i will have to give the name same as mine but it will not be able to connect so let's do this but you can still connect to it using other tools such as powershell or putty so i will be using powershell you can use putty or any tool which you want so i will open powershell in the meantime it is connecting there so it should throw us an error and if it connects it totally depends upon aws if it allows disconnect or not but yeah we will be able to connect from terminal so we are getting this error so now let's go where my key is so my key is inside this directory so this is the directory where my key is present as you can see we are unable to connect from browser but if i go back to my instance copy this command and paste it over here and instead of root we have to write the name of the server like which we gave as username as soon as i hit enter it should ask me for password here and now it is asking us for password which was one admin one two three four five and if i hit enter we will be able to connect as you can see my server at the rate of my server virtual box now if i do ls all our files are visible so we have to go inside my test.txt and check if we have opened correct file or not so let's just open it directly cat my text my test dot txt and you can see congrats this is migrated machine we will be going with database migration so if i have to compare with our strategies in this one we will be using the strategy replatform in our virtual machine migration we use the strategy rehost so let's see how replatform works when we have to go with database migration so if i have to discuss these steps so the first thing is let's say if i have a database on premise what i can do for migrating it to my aws so going with the definition migrating a local database to rds or migrating one rds instance to another rds instances that's what we can do so if i have to give this thing like in more precise and easy way what I can do, let's say there is a database which is present on premise. I can create a RDS instance which will con be connected to that database. And like after that, I can use that RDS instance using my database migration tool to create any RDS instance which will be available on my AWS and I can use that. So here in this diagram we can even understand that once i have created a rds instance which will be containing the data of my on premise database i can co even convert it to mysql postgresql or mariadb as per my choice it doesn't matter what form it was in my on premise i can go with any once i have to migrate so now if i have to further discuss the strategies how to migrate so let's say what i am doing here that i am exporting the local database to a sql file then i am creating a rds instance to run the sql file so this is what is happening in my on-premise database and rds instance 
so let's say i have a on premise database how i am connecting that to my rds instance i am basically exporting the database which is on premise to a sql file and once I, it is done i am creating a rds instance and i am running the sql file in that instance now once that is done what i am doing i am using database migration service to migrate this rds instance so this is where it comes in place the step between rds instance and migrating to other rds instance you can see there is a small diagram that is my database migration service offered by aws itself which i can use to migrate this rds instance which is connected to my on premise using the exported sql file now what it is doing it is creating a source rds and a destination rds so this rds instance will be my source rds and any of the others which is present on aws like mysql postgre maria db will be my destination and i can use the dms to migrate it so in this diagram you can see between rds instance and the other rds instance answers present i have this small figure this is my database migration service which is used in order to migrate one of my rds instances to multiple rds instances i can use any of the kind using this so that's what is explained here that once i am done with exporting my local database to sql file and creating a rds instance then i can use my database migration services to migrate this rds instance to any of the like uh, database engines it doesn't matter what type they are the other thing is i have to while creating a database migration service like while using i have to create a source rds and a destination rds endpoint it is very important because this is what connects my sql exported rds to the new rds which i am creating on cloud so these two things are very important once the task is created it will migrate everything for us it will take quite some time but yeah it will be eventually done and once it is migrate it will function fully properly so that's all about database migration and this using this figure you can understand that a single rds can be migrated into another rds as well database migration so basically it will be a hands on what we will do we will create two databases and then we will migrate one database to another database using our database migration service so let's create a database first and we will be making our database publicly accessible in order to access it from the xamp and see the data so first we will be creating a mysql database so standard create mysql and engine version can be any i will go with free tier and database let's give it the name as my source database now the next thing is credentials so the master username will be admin and let's give a password as well and here also now once we have given the password let's configure our database for the we will be going with t3.micro and let's go with a small size 20 gb will be enough for us and i don't want to okay let's go with 10 gb no the 20 gb will be minimum value so we will go with 20 gb itself the minimum which we can have because we don't need very much storage for this practice but yeah going with the real life we will go with a greater storage capacity i will be doing it in my default vpc and publicly accessible yes and i will go with password authentication monitoring i don't need enhanced monitoring and let's go to additional and let's create a initial database so that we know that this is our database so my database or let's say yeah my data itself 
now the next thing is automated backups i don't want them i don't want any encryption basically the settings can be anything as per our preference yeah so everything is okay so let's click on create database and it will be created so my source database has been created so now let's create a target database so create database and here both of them will be same because if we are going with different then we can definitely go with different but we will have to install additional directories so i will go with the same for practice but if you want you can explore it further so free tier and let's give it a name my target data base so basically this name you can give either in caps or small that doesn't matter it will be stored in small itself so no need to worry about it now the password will be anything as per my choice yeah. now the next thing is choosing the instance class and storage so storage will be 20 gb and i don't want storage scaling connectivity let's go with default itself and let's go with initial so let's give it any other name my target actually we don't even need a database here it will be created for us by default so let's not create it so let's remove just automated backup encryption and let's see if there is deletion protection we will be removing it but there is no deletion protection so i won't be removing it so create database now it is also created my both databases are created so now let's see if any one of them is active both are in creation mode so in the meantime let's configure our dms before filling data over here so for configuring our dms what are the things that we will need let's see that so let's search for our dms which is database migration service which we will be using in order to migrate our data so i will be opening it in another tab so let's go with dms and let's see what are the things that we will need so there are three things which we will need endpoint replication instance and database migration task so once we are at our database migration dashboard we will be using these three things which are our database migration task replication instance and endpoint so once we are inside our dms we will have to use just these three things in order to migrate our database the first thing is endpoint then replication instances and database migration task so which one to create first so i can't cre create database migration task first why because if i go to creation of this database migration task i will require replication instance source database and target database and out of these two i can create any one first but if i want to create endpoint first in that case while testing the endpoint i will need at least one replication instance so for that reason let's create a replication instance first now what are replication instances basically it will contain the data of my source database and after when the data is transferred from my source to replication it will transfer it to my database so let's give it my replica and now description if we want we can give the description well description is not necessary now let's create a machine i can go with a small machine engine version let's go with latest allocated size let's give 20 gb as we have given over there create default now multi az if you want you can go with multi az which is production workload or you can go with single az which is development workload publicly accessible yes i want to give it publicly accessible in order to check the data now the next thing is advanced security configuration if you want you can change these things else you can leave it at default so i will leave it at default the next thing is maintenance so always enable it to get the version upgrades 
and tags are just like giving the names and everything so which we have already given if we want we can alter alter this and that's all about replication instance now once we click on create this will be created so it will take quite some time in order to create our replication instance so in the meantime let's create our endpoints go to create endpoint so there are two types of endpoints source endpoint and target endpoint so let's see if our databases are created so our databases are created so before creating an endpoint let's fill some data so we will be filling the data in our source so let's copy the endpoint from here and let's log into it and let's make some data changes so i will use xamp for that purpose so in xamp start this sql which is for me started already and go to the shell so once we are inside the shell let's connect to it so the command is my sql hyphen h paste the endpoint then hyphen u write the username which we are trying to access and hyphen p now let's give the password and if the password is correct we should be corrected now let's see the databases so if you remember i gave a initial database in it which is my data which is available over here so let's use this my data and create a table into it so use my data and you can see now i am inside my data so let's create a very small table create table and table name will be my tab and let's give it the columns as let's say eid which will be a numerical value integer and name which will be var care of type 20 sorry length 20 now once i hit it should be done now let's see if the table is created or not so show tables and you can see my tab is created and if i have to see the data in my tab select star from my tab you can see that it is empty it doesn't contain any data so now let's enter some data into our tab table so insert into my tab values so let's insert three values at the same time the first one is employee id one name will be abc then employee id 2 name will be mno now the next is employee id 3 and the name will be xyz now we are done with this data entering thing let's see record 3 so let's run the select command and let's see if it is empty or it got the details so you can see 1 abc 2 mno and 3 xyz the data has been entered so let's exit from here and now let's log on to our second database and let's see if it is containing the data or not now if i go to databases and database one which is my target and if i copy its endpoint and go back to xamp and i will run the same command for the connection but change the endpoint because we have the same admin name so now let's change the endpoint over here and enter now enter the password which we gave and if we have entered the correct password and all the configurations are correct we should be able to connect and we are connected so it is taking quite some time to load depending upon the speed but no worries so now let's see the databases if our database is present show databases so you can see no database is present but once we replicate it it will be present so let's hop on to the next step which is creating our endpoints so the first thing is source endpoint so let's give it the name my source and source engine is my sql so i will select my sql and here is the major part access to endpoint data either give it a secret key or provide access manually if you have created a se secret key which is having the details you can go with it but here i will be going with the manual part where i will be putting my server name port and everything so let's first give the server name of our source which is my source database so let's copy the endpoint 
and paste over here so once i have pasted the endpoint now we are ready to move to the next part which is the port number which is 3306 username let's give it and password once we have given these things we don't have any certification and let's go to endpoint settings and here you can see the endpoint settings we don't have to change anything everything looks fine kms key yeah it is also fine and tags it is also fine so now the next thing is if i want i can test the connection from the replica but currently our replica is in creation so i won't be able to test if i test it let's see what the result it will give my replica is not active which means it is still in creation so let's create this endpoint and the endpoint is created now the other thing is we will have to create a target so again go to create endpoint target endpoint and now let's give it the name my target now the next thing is target engine again it is my sql because i am transferring it into a my sql database now product access information manually and this time i won't be copying from my target which is database 1 so let's copy it and paste it over here and port number username and finally the password now we are done with this and create endpoint this endpoint is created let's see what is the status of our application instance so it is still in creating so let's wait for it to be created because for creating our data migration task we need this replication instance and currently you will see that it is not visible even though our endpoints are visible so let's wait for it to be created so i waited for approx uh, 15 minutes and it is up and available now so let's hop on to the next part which is database migration task creation so let's start it so let's give it a name my migration task now i have given the name so the next thing is replication instance and you can see it is available over here i selected it my source and my target now migration type what type of migration if i want that they should behave as replicas that once i am uploading new data it should be uploaded so i will go with this if i want that previous data should not be there only the new data should be there i will go with this but i want only previous data so i will go with this now the next thing is target table preparation so drop tables on target very easy it is for us now include lob columns it is for large objects i want limited large object so no worries regarding that and let's see advanced task settings and control table settings so here you can see everything we can leave as default then after that we have rules we need to make at least one rule over here so click on add new selection rule enter a schema and we can leave everything as default and it will work now the next thing is pre migration assessment run we don't require this we don't require this also like we want it to automatically create so it will automatically create on startup So now let's click on create task and you can see once the task is created it is in creation once it is created then i can go to my this table and i can run show databases and my data will be available over here so let's wait for it so now i waited for almost 2 to 3 minutes and my migration task has been created and you can see my migration task is starting and is in progress and now it is running which means that now the migration is happening it is in process so it is showing some errors but no worries if i go back here show databases you can see my data is available it may show some errors but no worries it will work totally fine so now let's go to my data and i am inside my data and let's do show tables and you can see my tab tab is available so let's do select star from my tab and you can see the data has been migrated so let's once more exit and again log in and check if we are inside the same place or not so exit and 
we are out now let's go back to our rds so you can see this is database one which we gave as our target so let's copy it and let's go over here my sql hyphen h paste it hyphen u admin hyphen p which is enter and let's enter the password and once i enter the password i will be redirected and now i can again check the changes that the changes are made you can see my data is available and here is one more thing aws dms control is now available which means that this is database migration task control using this database that migration was done so now let's go inside my data and you will be able to see that yes even though it shows error my migration has been successfully done so i am inside my data again and show tables and my tab is available which proves that we are inside our same same database which we chose as target select a star from my tab and the data is available at both the places just a quick info guys IntelliPart offers advanced certification in DevOps and cloud computing in collaboration with IIT M Pravartha, a technology innovation hub of IIT Madras. This online advanced certification in DevOps and cloud computing by IIT M Pravartha will help you gain expertise in DevOps, access management, DevSecOps, Terraform, and more. With this course, we have already helped thousands of professionals in successful career transition. You can check out their testimonials on our Achievers channel. The link is given in the description below. Without a doubt, this course can set your career to new heights. So visit the course page link given in the description below and take your first step towards career growth in the field of cloud and DevOps.